All right, so I've got a little bit of clear gel and white on the top here. Just a little clear gel, just right here, kind of dry toward the bottom. Got my piece of tape, obviously, that divides the horizon line, kind of makes it work for the seascape. All right, now that, that's gonna be just fine. Let's go ahead and get some color going. I'm using oil paints today. I like oil paints for seascape. We could just as easily do acrylic. All right, there you go. Some sort of a yellow. I, I, <laughs> sometimes you gotta be indecisive when you paint. You just can't, can never make up my mind sometimes. Yeah, it's one of those moments. Made that a little more yellow. And I'm just gonna create a little movement of yellow across the sky, not a whole lot. Uh, maybe right now I've got my mountains right here. Just a little perhaps right there, not a whole lot. That's probably good. Okay, and then as I go out, I want some peach. So let's do that. Just a little bit of peach, some yellow, and yellow ochre, red, white. Okay. Let's see, right up in through here, yes. Hey, while I'm doing this, let's take a look at the, uh, at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. Now, if you're not doing your version, or at least if you're probably doing it, not sharing it with me, definitely consider sharing it because it really is fun to see. You guys do such a great job. The information is there on the screen if you'd be interested in, in sharing it with me. And if I see it in time, I'll get it, of course, in the next video. Well, now I'm going to begin working on my darker clouds up here. I've got kind of a purple color. It's actually a lot lighter than you might think. You're not gonna need a very dark purple here. Uh, I think if you go too dark, it'll just be too wild of a sky. This way, it won't be quite so wild. And if you want to punch in a dark here and there, you've got the opportunity, but, but I'm gonna keep it a little bit on the lighter side. I mean, it still kind of looks dark, but it's just like, if you look at that color on the palette, it, <laughs> it doesn't look dark. In fact, I had a couple, two or three shades already mixed up that they didn't quite work because they were too dark. That's why I gotta test it out on your test it out on your canvas, see if you even like it before you just start doing half the painting and then realize that you don't like it. Oh, I've been there. We've all been there. We've all been there. It's not a fun place to go. I don't plan to, to visit today. <laughs> That's kind of pretty. Now, of course, as you work away from the yellow, it's a lot safer to to do things like with more of a with more of a uh, a blue tone. And I'll probably do that. I'll just add a little bit of this kind of make that kind of gray here toward the bottom. We do have our beautiful mountains coming in soon. So you don't necessarily have to worry about the bottom as much as the top. And we've got trees on this. It helps to plan the painting. <laughs> it helps to plan the painting. We've got trees on that side. And so I know for a fact it's gonna get covered. Let's work over here where I know it's not gonna get covered. A little more on the blue side right here. A little bit more on the blue side over here. That's beautiful. Now it's not necessary to actually add any paint. In fact, in fact, I don't have my palette there. So I'm just using the, the color that I have right here on the canvas and I'm moving it around in order to get kind of a nice, a little more interesting look. I guess what I'm really trying to do is put brush strokes in it. They're very subtle. I don't even know if you can see them. I can see them here in person, but it just makes it look a little bit more oh, artistic, I don't know to have like these little brush strokes kind of built in the sky. Well, now I'm gonna place in my little islands. So, or, or land masses, I guess they're not really islands. I'm gonna grab my, my kind of purpley tone here. Not too dark, not too light, I hope. <laughs> we'll see. Right up in through here. I mean, very, very faint. Um, oh, it's, it's not bad. That's not bad. Maybe a little lighter. Just a little lighter, maybe? I don't know. It's a, when you're using pastel colors, it, um, wow, little, little tiny adjustments, really. You know, they, they change a lot. There we go. All right, now, as far as this mountain goes, I, I like it to come all the way out to here. There we go. Yeah. And then if you want to do one more, maybe a little darker. And then, uh, you know, something you can always add to purple to make it a little bit more subtle. You can either add some yellow ochre or some umber. I'm gonna do umber. You don't wanna add so much that it looks weird, but just a little bit will help make it more subtle. Okay, so something along in those lines right there would be fine, maybe. <laughs> we'll see once we put it on the canvas. If it's, yeah, that's fine. That'll be just fine. And let me just begin to to work in this little mountain here. Now I'm gonna rip this little piece of tape off. Don't need that anymore. 
you see that kept the horizons, the horizon, I can't speak, the horizon line nice and straight. Now we got clear gel here at the bottom. This is just my island color. Um, maybe, maybe work off of this color. Maybe grab a little bit of red to add to that. Maybe a little bit more blue to add to that. I do want green, a fair bit of green in this water. But we'll just kind of have to just wait and see how it goes, you know. Maybe add a little, add a little more color as we go. But for now, I'm just gonna get in little bits. Oh, there it is, of this water. You know, you don't have to do the whole thing perfectly. There's my color right there. I'm just really, really winging it at this point. There, of course, we will have that light, but it's, it's kind of a pastel -y. It's not like super bright and vibrant today, so I'm not like as worried about as I would if it was a super vivid sunset and you would need to be super careful with your color. But for here, today, it's not as critical. Maybe a little brighter, a little whiter. Just begin, yeah, get the lighter color there. Your horizon is one thing I didn't, I didn't used to always do, but I'm learning it more and more as I do these uh, seascape paintings, which is make sure that your, your horizon line is very soft, you know? I used to kind of make them harsh because I didn't want to get rid of my line. I wanted them straight. <laughs> no, <laughs> I like them soft. I don't really care for them, even like right here. I mean, we're gonna really, really mess that up. Well, now I'm gonna kind of fill in the blanks here. I put it in a basic sketch. It's all this is a very basic sketch. And I'm just, like I said, filling in the blanks. I don't care about putting on too much paint. I'm probably gonna to need to wipe this off with a paper towel anyway. So I'm just trying to get some of this covered. You know, even, even some of the sketching color can kind of be muddled in here with this is just gonna be our ocean. But I painted it kind of like red and black. I don't know why, just, just whatever I grabbed. But it, you know, it kind of fits with the scheme here of the colors. Um, right in through here, you know, maybe it'll be a little darker. We can work at the shadows later. There is clear gel. That's why this is flowing as well as this is. All right, and this right here is gonna be a small splash. Might as well kind of get that going. And right here is a big splash. Probably end up indicating that more as we wipe it off with a paper towel. Uh, let's see here. Now, this is actually my water line. It's splashing probably around that rock. There's going to be a little bit of a... Well, no, no. There's my water line. I'm getting confused. There's my water line. There's my sandbar. Let's go ahead and paint this. That's funny. Let's go ahead and paint this in now. This is my sandbar right here. I've got kind of some logs and, and debris. I don't know if it'll stay the way that it is there or, or if I'll end up changing it a little. I don't know. But there's my sand. So that rock's actually there in the sand. Excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and place in these rocks. Not terribly carefully yet because I still have to wipe off the canvas. So anything that I do that's too intense here will <laughs> just be erased anyway. So I just wanna block in kind of major portions of, their, of the color of these rocks, you know? It's just a, a mottled gray. There it is right there, not really too crazy. Yeah, there we go. Less paint on that side. It's going to be engulfed there in the wave. Same on this one. It's always fun to do rocks that are kind of engulfed by the waves. I, th I think they're so pretty. I think they add something to the painting. Good color too. This color definitely, definitely works. Kind of maybe a, a few, a few rocks here, like a little, just a little spot of rocks, you know. There. You can. You can mess around with that later, you know, all sorts of things. You can do all sorts of things later as well. It doesn't have to all be done now. Little bits, you know, work at it little bits at a time. Now I'd like to spend just the next couple minutes, I won't go very long here, just taking a shop towel and removing all of, or most of, this paint up here. Of course, what you'll be left with is a stain on the canvas. Nothing more than a stain. I'm gonna do this anywhere I, ha I have splash, you know, of the wave. That includes this. I will be wiping all that off. That way I've got the opportunity to highlight or add more shadow or anything else that I'd like to do without creating a whole truckload of mud. Gonna need another. They come in rolls like this. If you can't get a hold of these shop towels, then I suggest a, like a rag, like a cotton rag or something like that because if you use paper towels, they will just shed apart. They'll come totally apart and they'll get right into your 
painting, and you think a brush hair is bad. I don't mind a brush hair. Oh, the paper towel fibers, they look horrible. So don't do that. There we go. Just adding in a little bit of a little bit of color here, not too much. Just place the color down. And then see there it is kind of a sea green. Place it down, you know, and then uh, and then you'll work with it. Yeah, that looks good. Don't need so much. Just just enough. You don't need so much. It, it looks kind of wild. I want to kind of keep the look of actually grab a little yellow ochre throw in here. The look of, you know, a lot of this like purple from the sky being reflected. Obviously, we will reflect some gold, but it'll mostly be in the highlight stages uh, that not so much anything else, really. That wave is supposed to be it's supposed to be somewhat um, fuzzy, so somewhat blurry. I don't want to go crazy and, and fill that in to the point where that you really, you know, it's sharp and it, because I want it to, this is such a, you can see how big the seascape is. Usually the horizon's down here. It's all the way up here. So that's pretty far. You know, I want it to look kind of far away. I don't want to lose my perspective. That would be, that would be not so great. So there you go. Now I'm going to drop in some shadow right here underneath this big splash, kind of up against the rock here. This is just a quarter inch brush. You could use a three quarter brush or even the filbert brush, whatever, or a detail brush. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. But that looks about right. Just get a little, uh, well, maybe a little more than a little splash. This is extremely dry, this area here, because as you recall, I wiped it off. And this white paint is actually the, uh, for the most part, just that canvas showing through. A little bit of a stain on the canvas. Okay. And that's pretty good. Of course, we'll do a final highlight now, but yeah, now as a step back, yeah, that looks good because it's backlit, right? You know, the, there's a sun coming in, so it would just be hitting kind of the outside edge. And this would be actually fairly dark in shadow. Well, not too dark, but a little bit dark in shadow there. And then maybe just a little bit of almost a cool, I mean, very subtle, very subtle. So I'll pull a little bit of that blue right there into my paint. And then I'll put that right here at the bottom. It just cools it off a little bit on the on the back side here. Well, we're going to change gears and do something a little different and kind of, you know, so much working on the ocean, you kind of just get kind of get tedious. So it's good to stop and do something else uh, right up in here. Now, I did not wipe this area off. I, I do like my cloud right there. I would like to keep that if at all possible. So up here, I'm going to just begin to stamp in uh, my jungle trees. This is supposed to be tropical looking. So that's exactly what we're going to do. But now that I've got the paint down on the canvas, I'm going to take my, my little brush and just pull it around. See, I didn't fill it in all solid or crazy or nothing like that. Uh, I, I maybe would like to go down just a tiniest bit further uh, with it. It's supposed to, there we go. It's supposed to obviously look like it's right here in the foreground somewhere or, you know, hanging in. I don't know. I don't know. We are going to have some palm trees. Let's go ahead and indicate those right now as well. Kind of a brown color. Um, maybe a little bit of red. I don't want it so dark that it's weird. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, this palm tree comes out right there. Now we're starting to look more interesting. Yeah. That's good. So anyway, you get the idea. Now you have to imagine our sunlight filtering through. And, and this is a soft painting. You see, I did a little more on the trees, kind of darkened them up, brought them forward a little better. Uh, it's a fairly, fairly soft area, you know? There's not a lot going on. And I want to keep it that way. I want to just splash in carefully, not to overdo. You want a little red in your color. You know, this is kind of a peach tone. You, you don't necessarily want just a yellow. I think a peach tone is going to look might even go more red. There we go. And that way, I'm, I'm talking very little here. Some of this white, I'll just let it show through. I don't need it to be, I don't need it to be so yellow today. We've done that before. We're just, oh, it's so yellow. It's so pretty, but not today. Not today. There. We're going to continue to just work little bits, very little. You see, I'm more conservative today than I normally am with my highlight because I like the softness of it, and I'm going to lose that if I'm not careful. I like the softness, and it kind of is, is you know, we might brighten that up a little bit. It won't be a whole lot. So just place on some of these little 
foam patterns, a little bit at a time, where you'll end up mixing mud. Wipe it, reload it frequently. See that? Grab a lot of paint, just kind of touch it here and there. It looks good though, doesn't it? It's starting to create a little, a little interest. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Just a little interest here in this, right in the middle here. Do I, do I really want to go all over here? Probably not as much, but I do want some, just very little. And if you, you recall, this is nearly dry. We wiped all this off. In fact, this is canvas right there. That's not even paint. That's just canvas. So I can fill that in with some of this little bit of a, a warmer tone to it. It kind of catches some of the warmth there in the sky. Blend that into the purple. Very soft this is my quarter inch flat brush. Nice and small. Very soft, easy to work. All these colors without creating mud of any kind, really. Now I'm going to soften up these trees here, these dark brown trees, because as you can see, in fact, I, I did soften the log up a little. I'm going to do a little more just with these blues, because you would not expect necessarily to see. Um, you wouldn't expect to see so much brown without some blue sort of smattered in, just given you know, the colors of the ocean. It just artistically pulls everything together quite a bit. So I'm going to do that. See that just it just is nice, you know, you, you know, you can do, you don't have to, you can do less or more, it doesn't really matter. But just going to smatter in and around here some of these leaves that are a little bit on the purple side. I did that here on the street. It just makes a difference. I just wanted to make sure that I showed you how to do that just so if you're looking, you know, you're like, oh, this is standing out too much. Get some of your sky, get some of your ocean and just put it in there and it'll work for you. Well, really one of the last major things we're going to do here is just place in a a little palm tree, which of course is off the edge of the picture. You can clearly see that. Uh, you could just as easily have a whole palm tree scene, you know, bury it down here in the sand somewhere. I'm not going to do that because I just think it's be a little more interesting to balance out the painting with, with something you can't see, the trunk, you know, you can't see the trunk. So just like any other, or just like the other trees here, not that I always do it this way, but I put the highlight kind of the mid-tone down first and then I put the darks and then I'll put the final highlight that way. Hey, when you do stuff like this, here's the tip. Start small. Look at this is very moderate in size. You can always go bigger, but how many of us would have taken the brush and go shoo, all the way halfway across the painting and say, well, I wish I wouldn't have made it quite that big. So my advice is go very, very minimal at the beginning. You can always make it a little bigger if you want. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this. I like the soft colors. I think it really works for, for a change on a seascape. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.